city's buildings tell a story of its people, history and culture. An urban landscape that expands and evolves as populations move in and on. By 2050, cities will be home to two-thirds of the global population. The increasing demand for space is seeing skylines and neighbourhoods change. And poor areas become affluent, reshaped into places that bear no resemblance to what they once were. On this episode of Compass, I'm exploring the role of art and artists in this process. In Shoreditch, nobody used to live here. Here, we have natürlich eine große Gemeinschaft gehabt, die sich so langsam eingelebt hat. Das ist zerstört worden. As long as money flows, everyone can come here. In their search for space, artists are pushed towards cheaper areas. But often, after artists move in, the prices go up. Are artists to blame for gentrification, or are they simply victims of the conditions they helped create? Join me on this episode of Compass as I explore the role of art in gentrification. The process of gentrification is a complicated one. But it often begins with an influx of artists looking for a cheap place to live and work. They create a community and a scene that attracts others to the area. Developers see potential and start buying property and land. Which leads to the inevitable. Many poorer residents, including artists, are priced out. I'm in Shoreditch in London, which used to be a working class neighborhood with crime and high levels of poverty until the early 90s. But now it's a destination for food and nightlife and a tech hub with property prices tripling in the last 20 years. But how did this change happen? What role did artists and the art world play in this transformation? And is what happened here a blueprint for so many areas becoming gentrified around the globe? Steve Edge runs his own design company in Shoreditch. He moved to this area in the 80s as a young artist. Shoreditch was perfect because it was full of old Victorian warehouses and ideal for big open spaces. Best of all, they're old commercial buildings. So it was a rundown area. There wasn't one shop in Shoreditch, not even a milk shop. It was dodgy. It was a very dodgy, dark area, ironically, with not much going on at all. Empty streets, empty old buildings, and there's a lot of stuff going on that you kind of turned your eye away from because you thought, oh, 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 <laughs> it doesn't look right. It cost nothing. Shoreditch was big spaces and with very low values because nobody wanted to live there and you couldn't live there. Uh, but we decided as artists that it would be a great idea if we all moved in and lived in commercial space. Many artists started moving to Shoreditch to find space to work, breathing new life into the neighbourhood. At the time, within the London psyche, Shoreditch didn't exist. You had to, and so I would say to friends, come over to, to where, I, where I, I'm doing a party in, in this warehouse. And they would go, where is it? And I go, it's in Shoreditch. And they go, where's that? Ernesto Leal has been the owner of Red Gallery for the last eight years. But rent has gone up too much, and now he has to move. 
He sees street art as a cause of gentrification. I think street art is heavily involved as part of the process of gentrification. Whereas graffiti, before that, you wouldn't walk down that street if you saw graffiti, would you? Back then, say 20, 20 years ago, you would be like, what's this? But you walk in that same street 10 years later and you see street art, most people will walk down that street. In 10 years, I think people will be able to see that they, they were part of that gentrification process. Shoreditch is a very different place now. We're seeing the city has grown. The city has now become part of Shoreditch. We're getting a lot of hedge fund people moving in because the prices are just going higher and higher and higher because it's so central. Um, and also, you know, money talks. So a lot of the artists and creatives are having to move out. You had the tech people coming in and that's, that was the change. And then when, when the tech people started coming in, you had the advertising agencies and then you had the private members bars. People are just buying into something. They, you know, they come, they're coming into an area, they, 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 they think there's artists, they feel it, but they're not, they're not actually getting involved. And that's what I think is wrong. What happens with gentrification is that we, it's under the guise of like regenerating those areas and bringing more like but it's not generating it for the people who live there, it's generating so that rich people can basically come in and buy it out or like... It becomes unaffordable for the communities who live there. Muslim Sisterhood is a group of photographers trying to reclaim the identities of working class communities in London. These, yeah, and these are spaces that are constantly changing, like these are spaces that are being gentrified and I think it's important for us to have these images of what they used to be as well um, and like celebrate local businesses as much as we can. We wanted to reclaim this working class aesthetic because Muslims, we're the faith group that is most likely to suffer from poverty. That's so nice. That's why we worked really hard to like, you know, shoot in places like Brixton, shoot in places like Hackney shooting um, Brick Lane because those are places that were integral to, to us growing up and integral to the girls we shoot. While changing neighbourhoods can be difficult for existing residents, some artists like Steve Edge, who has managed to stay in Shoreditch, are more positive about the evolution. The art in itself if you're talking about all the artists, what they're producing and making on a daily basis, is the blood that's, that's brought it to the Shoreditch neighbourhood and has made it great. Change brings good, as long as you can kind of bring the right people to the party. Berlin, referred to by its former mayor as poor but sexy. It's a city of renters but is now in the midst of rapid urbanization and gentrification. Rents have gone up more than 75% since 2011. And Berlin is now the city with the fastest rising property prices in the world. Divided by the Cold War and ruled by communism for over 40 years, Berlin was always an edgier and cheaper European capital. This attracted artists from around the world. But more recently, tech companies have started transforming the city. Google is building a new campus in the Kreuzberg area, a move that's been met with resistance. Locals don't want Berlin to become a place only for the rich. Kreuzberg used to be one of the poorest areas in Berlin, but with the influx of artists, it's been transformed into one of Berlin's biggest alternative cultural centers. For many, art is the reason why they come here to Kreuzberg. A group of Berlin artists painted over the world-famous murals that used to be on the wall behind me, saying they would rather destroy their street art than let it contribute to the gentrification process. Hello. Reinhard Stangl is one of those artists who have been affected by the influx of blue chip companies. I was here 
30 Jahre in Kreuzberg, habe mein Atelier in der Oranienstraße gehabt. Vor vier Jahren begann eine ganz starke Welle der Gentrifizierung in Kreuzberg. Alle Künstler haben bis heute die Straße verlassen, die mal eine große Künstlerstraße war. Man traf sich im Café früh morgens und man traf sich auf der Straße. Das gibt es nicht mehr. Hier, wir haben natürlich eine große Gemeinschaft gehabt, die sich so langsam eingelebt hat. Das ist zerstört worden, weil natürlich plötzlich Kreuzberg interessant war für viele Leute aus der ganzen Welt. Jetzt kamen aus diesen ganzen Ländern vor allen Dingen viele junge Leute, auch mit vielen neuen Ideen und die sogenannten Start-ups. Und die fing an, langsam sich hier zu etablieren. Denn Berlin hatte jahrelang als Thema, wir sind eine Kunstmetropole. Und dann haben sie gemerkt, es funktioniert nicht so richtig. Dann haben sie es fallen lassen, dann sollte es eine Modemetropole werden. Das klappte auch nicht. Jetzt ist es eine Start-up-Metropole. Turkish-German rapper Killa Hakan grew up in Kreuzberg, along with many other Turkish immigrants. Turkish <gülüyor> Tapeten yapmaya başlar. Çocuklar bile Almanya ne faydalar getirmişiz. Bizim buraya sırf güzelliğimiz olmuş. Hala da güzelliğimiz var. Şurada oturuyoruz, yabancılar geliyor bizi ziyarete, insanları getirip bak buraları size gösterdik. Bir daha geldiğin zaman yine gelirsin buraya. Bak Kina Hakan sana burayı gösterdi. Ben kaç kişilere daha böyle gösterdim. Biz Kreuzberg'i tanıtan, sevdiren biziz. Biz burada olduğumuz için de burası hala kaynıyor böyle cıvıl cıvıl her yer. Alle rausgegangen, alle rausgegangen. Also ich kenne jetzt, in, ich war heute früh hier in meiner Straße, habe Kaffee getrunken und früher habe ich alle gekannt, die auf der Straße liefen, aber heute kenne ich keinen mehr. Nur vier Jahre sind vergangen und schon hat sich alles verändert. Das Problem, wenn man solche Strukturen so brachial einreißt, ist es ja nur, kann man nur sagen, dass danach da ist die, das, das baut sich nicht wieder auf. Naja, ich denke mal, wir wollen die Rolle der Kunst nicht überbewerten. Die war aber ein großer Faktor, um die Leute nach Berlin zu locken. Die Künstler waren hier auch immer zugänglich. Es gab immer große Partys und Feste. Und das hat äh, auch den Charakter dieser Stadt mal geprägt. What do you think about Google coming to Berlin? Do you support that? Do you think Google should be in Berlin? Ja, was soll man dazu sagen? Nicht? Das ist die neue Zeit. Und äh, die kommt und wir können ja nichts mehr gegen machen. Die Zeit hat uns auch überrollt in dem Punkt. Nicht? Wir arbeiten ja noch, äh, sagen wir mal, wie im 19. Jahrhundert alle. Wir malen, zeichnen, denken noch über die Welt nach. Nicht? Das ist vielleicht gar nicht mehr so wichtig geworden. Ne? Wichtig sind andere Dinge geworden heute. Man kann heute alles Wichtige aus dem Internet nehmen. Ne? So, what does Kreuzberg mean to you personally? Jetzt nichts mehr. Also, ich war hier 30 Jahre und ich erkenne die Straße nicht wieder. Die ist anders geworden. Und äh, ich habe auch keine Sehnsucht hierher. Äh, ich suche mir andere Orte, nicht? also das, das ist vorbei und wie die meisten Leute, die ich kenne, denen geht das ebenso. Nikhil Chowdhury is an urban cartoonist who lives in Berlin. He draws Berlin as he sees it changing. 
I like to traverse the city a lot. So I'm always, you know, walking, I'm on foot, I'm taking the, the public transit, uh, I'm biking around because that also helps me understand the urban planning of the city. So as an artist, I also sketch the city a lot because most of my comic stories are about the city being a very important character in the story. Nikhil is a member of an artist collective called Engels in Berlin. What we are trying to do is try to explore Berlin in the sense that we would like to see it covered. That is the side of Berlin that is never seen in, in the mainstream media. Berlin has this image of this you know, hip uh, artistic place and of course there's, there's a new tech culture that, that is taking roots. Nikhil expressed his feelings about gentrification in some of his recent work. What we see is, you know, these, these towering godlike figures, which are the two prominent architects, Walter Gropius and uh, Le Corbusier, both highly influential figures in terms of modernist urban planning. And they're literally, you know, grafting this alien organ into the heart of the city. Every urban planning intervention that you commit to is going to affect the life of this living city for a long time to come. So you need to be very th thoughtful of your actions and that relates to you know, how do you build your environment and how does that relate uh, to gentrification as well. As Berlin grows in ways many residents feel uncomfortable with and can't afford, artists are migrating to the Greek city of Athens. After 10 years of financial crisis, it's a cheap place for them to live. Athens sits on a magnificent and unique history, although it's increasingly been compared to Berlin, mostly because of its thriving art scene and the urban transformation taking place here. I'm here to find out if that comparison is accurate and whether this transformation resembles the gentrification in Berlin. Kakao Rocks is a local street artist who has come up with a new motto. Athens is the new Berlin. A phrase he has plastered all around the city. I'm actually being hated about writing this on the walls. Athenians don't like it. They don't like comparing these two cities. It was when the crisis started and a lot of, friend of friends of mine moved to Berlin to work there. And it was cooler for an artist to stay there. And I had like the idea, why don't we try to make our city cool like Berlin, rather to go there. Athens is an ancient city with a big history behind it. It will never be like Berlin. It's a different city with people with different mentality. And, but I think it's going to be better than Berlin, <laughs> yes. He says he feels partly responsible for some of the gentrification in Athens. When I came to this neighborhood, we were like deep in the crisis. There was no future for our city. I don't know if Athens is going to be the new Berlin, but it's changing. And I think something is happening here. Maybe this city will give birth to something new. Not everyone shares the same enthusiasm about graffiti in Athens. Based in Metaxurhyr, Rebecca Kamhi is a gallery owner with a mission to clean up the neighborhood she lives and works in. Metaxurhyr is a tricky area. There's a lot of criminal activity going on, a lot of illegal criminal activity that is being neglected by the government. They love, I mean, not just painting, cleaning, sweeping the floors, washing. Um, this city is so dirty and so messed up. Here, I think, presumptuously enough, that painting a white wall is cool and not doing graffiti. So I think if you really want to be cool, you'd be holding a bucket of water and some white paint, and then I think that's a bit more radical and more 
anarchist behavior. I caught up with Rebecca as she was painting over some graffiti on the wall of a brothel next to her gallery. This is my artwork. I should get credit for it. In my specific area, when I live, what I wish was achieved is basically to have a clean place where there's no garbage everywhere, where there's no illegal drug trafficking and illegal human trafficking, simple things, just basic non-criminal activity. Is Athens the new Berlin? People seem to think that in the recent years Athens is becoming this art hub, which I don't know if it's true, but what I understand, it's possible that because we've gone so low and the crisis has hit us so hard, it might be a very good opportunity for people to move in here and find places with low rents. When a place feels very run down and very desperate, people are attracted and maybe want to help and create things. Elia Hussaban, an Israeli painter, has moved from Kreuzberg, Berlin to Athens in the Metaxurhio area recently and wants to see it change. Everywhere, when this area that is cheap, suddenly uh, the artists come in, I'm talking about myself, and start to do with low budget whatever I want. And the area become blossom slowly, slowly, because art bring more people. So this area actually was also like I known a lot of junkie, um, homelesses. It's, it's still there is some parts you can walk and you feel your your pain in your heart with what you see. And I hope it will open more galleries and the art really will bring this area to make for a middle class and not only for the lower class. Walking down Metaxurhio streets, it's easy to see why so many people think the comparison between Athens and Berlin is problematic in so many ways. You see rundown buildings next to fancy coffee shops like this. Although you might think this is how Kreuzberg looked like in early years of its gentrification, I can't help but wonder whether the contrast was ever this stark. Pokaio is the founding director of the Athens Biennale and has a studio in Metaxurhio. He says the change in Athens is happening at a grassroots level. For many of us, for years, within our peers, within our community, I mean, I'm talking about artists, academics, intellectuals, theorists, when it comes up, it's something that finds everyone united against it. Gentrification has to have a, a master plan. Someone that has a strategic thinking of how to exploit certain resources, uh, namely uh, spatial resources, urban resources. I don't see that happening to a, a great extent. What is top and what is down? Who is doing the gentrification? Usually we use a term for something that is top down, but I would say in Athens it's equally bottom up. He doesn't want the image of Athens to be tainted by Greece's financial crisis and instability. I would like to propose alternative ways to see Athens, not through the stereotypes, either the classical ones or the contemporary ones. When you go to Athens, because it's kind of now a synonym for this unrest, you are kind of focusing on this kind of graffiti, etc., as signs of being, you know, the battleground of this unrest. I don't think that Athens is the new Berlin, or maybe Berlin is not what it used to be. Berlin is becoming more stale, more dry, more institutional, uh, less friendly, uh, less youthful, more organization-oriented, less uh, arty. Ten years into a financial crisis, abandoned buildings and cheap rent has made Athens an enclave for artists, with the potential to become one of Europe's main artistic hubs. London's shortage shows the impact that money can have, the power to transform an area 
leaving many of its original residents behind. As cities evolve, artists play contradictory roles. Gentrification is a complicated process. As economies grow and neighborhoods change, communities usually adapt, but sometimes resist. In the cycle of gentrification, artists undoubtedly play a big role. Sometimes, unwittingly, they are the protagonists of gentrification. Sometimes they are the victims, but often they are both.